are the main drivers of this mass extinction that they're talking about? And, and can you simplify for us what sort of chain effects occur when a certain creature goes extinct? We're told by 2020, in three years, that we will be missing 66% of all land wildlife. In the ocean, from 2000 to 2010, for a 10 year period, human beings poached and slaughtered one billion sharks. For most wow. of the shark species, we're now missing 90% of sharks. They keep the oceans healthy by removing their prey that's sick and weak and old, and they prevent diseases from going global. We are destroying all life. This is a crisis of epic proportion. 44% last year of our honeybees in America didn't make it. But for, yeah. It's the highest death rate we've ever seen. And the culprit is where the, their habitat is being destroyed, the chemicals on the land are killing them. If the bees die, we die because we can't have any food to eat. Bees are actually gentle and beneficial and we need to be nice to the bees because the bees are in trouble. There are a lot of, a lot of people have heard in the news about colony collapse disorder, CCD, and this showed up in the mid-2000s where commercial beekeepers, uh, several of them in the same year, discovered that their hives were perfectly healthy one day and they came back for the next inspection a week later and there weren't dead bees, there were no bees. That's what colony collapse disorder is, and disorder just means we don't really know what it is. And when they did tests inside those hives, they couldn't test any dead bees because there were no dead bees, but they found a multitude of diseases um, in those hives, uh, more than we even knew existed. Bees are beneficial because they pollinate, and that's, their, that's actually their, it's the best product that they do for us. We, when we eat our food, a lot of that food is the result of an insect pollinating. And if a, if a vegetable or a fruit didn't, didn't get pollinated, then we wouldn't have the fruit or the vegetable. Or we'd have a fruit or the vegetable that's undeveloped or immature or just, just really not as much of it. So we can thank a, a bee for every third bite that we eat. Not only because of the food that they directly pollinate, but also because of the food that they pollinate that then indirectly helps feed other things that we eat, like 
like uh, livestock. We still have not found any single cause of colony collapse disorder. It's probably a combination of things, um, probably poor nutrition, lack of habitat, so we're, you know, all the native, all the feral bees, the wild bees, um, are, they have no place to live anymore because we pave everything. We have these big, huge lawns that uh, they can't live in. But the last piece of the, of the puzzle is probably pesticides, and we, we tend to use pesticides more quickly than we need to, and um, you know, we're, we don't always use them correctly. And there's two different kinds of pesticides. A new pesticide that just came on the market and started being widely used around about the time colony collapse. Um, so, so there are a number of beekeepers that suspect there's a correlation there. But this new class of pesticides are systemic. They're called neonicotinoids, and the neonicotinoids um, they, they are taken up into the whole plant, so when a pest bug comes and chews on the plant, it will die because it gets the insecticide on that leaf, even though you didn't put the insecticide on that leaf. It's in the whole plant. So what this means for the bees is that the insecticide is actually in the nectar and pollen of the treated plant. So the bees will bring that back to the hive, the pollen and nectar, and they'll feed it to their young and they'll eat it themselves and that, what that does is continuously expose the entire colony to the pesticide. And this is true not only for honeybees but also for all the native bees. Uh, what's going on right now is many independent research studies seem to indicate that this has several detrimental sublethal effects on the honeybees you know, as well as the native bees, uh, things that would lead to their decline. If we want to help the bees, so um, a couple of things, provide habitat, provide food for them. Now the bees need to, to eat from spring all the way through fall. If we have just one kind of flower, well if we have no flowers in our yard, okay, that's, there's nothing for them to eat. And, uh, and give them a variety of plants because, you know, the, the bees only get food in, uh, from the plant when it's blooming. And last resort is chemicals and pesticides. Um, there's a lot of manual things we can do that are, are less invasive, less destructive to the environment.